Hey guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Learning Channel. Today we're gonna to be installing the Pitch Break High to Low, our WS436 transition trim. Uh, this is actually a 18 inch wide snap lock panel. And we're just gonna give you the basics on how the, uh, the system is actually installed. So we're gonna go over the Z closure installation, as well as the mastic for Z closure, uh, placement for your Z closure, and how to get everything on the actual Pitch Break itself lined out uh, for a proper installation. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. Use of the following video content is subject to the warning, disclaimer of warranties, and limitation of liability as set forth on this screen. Uh, first step, obviously we're gonna be installing all of our panels down below. We already have that, uh, that process started and finished up. So now we're gonna be taking our pitch break high to low trim. We're gonna set it on top of the high of the panels. Uh, main thing that you wanna watch for on this is making sure that it kind of uh, flushes out and stays on the same plane as your lower pitch down here. That way you don't get any water pooling or anything on the actual uh, pitch break itself. Okay, and now that we have that on the same plane, what I'm gonna do is take my pencil and mark the actual high of the panels here. That way we know where to place our mastic as well as our Z closure. So from here, we're gonna take this off and I'll show you how to do your layout for your mastic on your Z closure. Uh, some installers will actually take the Z closure itself, put mastic on the bottom side of each piece of Z. Uh, this particular method, we're going to be running a continuous strip of mastic all the way across the panels, up over the highs. Uh, it just creates more of a actual waterproof seal uh, around the highs of the panels itself. Um, so first step, we've got our mark for our panel on the high of where the end of our transition trim is going to be. And I want our front of our Z closure to be back from that a half an inch. So I'm gonna make a mark there. Um, typically you can go to the other side of your roof deck or go 15, 20 feet, do the same exact thing and you can start snapping chalk lines all the way across. In this particular installation, since we're working with a small mock-up, I'll just go through and mark out each panel. The next step that we're gonna be taking, we're gonna take our Z closure. Uh, we're gonna put our tape on and measure to the center of the bottom flange. Ours is measuring roughly two and three eighths to the center of the lower flange that's gonna be on the actual roof itself. So what we're gonna do, we have our top measurement and we're gonna measure back two and three eighths and make a mark on the roof panel. Okay, and we're gonna be repeating that method on the other side of the roof. That way we can go through and uh, snap our chalk lines. We now have all of our highs marked out, uh, two and three eighths back from the front of the Z closure. Uh, like I said, the measurement may vary just a little bit depending on the, the Z closure you get, so you wanna make sure to measure it. Um, now we're gonna go through with just a straight edge and mark out the pan of the panel, so that way we have a good straight line of where the, the mastic's gonna be going. Now that we have all of our marks made uh, for the center of our lower flange on our Z closure, we're gonna be attaching our screws through. Uh, we put that dead center, so we're gonna also wanna center our mastic over that. So first thing with your mastic, you wanna come up over the top of the high, and then make sure that you get it seated well down into each of the, uh, the corners of the panel. And then we're doing the same thing over here where there's the crease of the actual snap lock panel. You wanna make sure that that gets pushed in pretty well. You don't wanna make the, the you don't wanna tighten the mastic too much, like push it in too tight, or else it'll start ripping the mastic and stretching it out.
Now that we have our mastic set, everything's pressed down tight. We're gonna go through and remove the liner here. Now that this process is complete, we're ready to start installing our Z-closure. Uh, we're just gonna be using a, uh, an impact or a drill with uh, pancake screws. Uh, the amount of fasteners that you put in the Z-closure is completely based off of uh, your architectural plans. Always consult with an engineer to find the proper screw spacing uh, for your project, especially on the Z-closure, because uh, pretty much every job, every area is gonna be a little bit different. So you'll definitely wanna get with a local engineer to figure out the specifications. On this particular application, we're gonna be running about four screws per piece of Z, and uh, just to get you guys an idea of how everything goes together. We now have all the Z closure installed. I just kinda of wanted to walk you guys through it. On this far piece over here, I ended up taking that, that edge off, that way we weren't running into it on the mock-up, but as you can see, going throughout the center, you have that one inch flange and your one inch fold. So these flanges overlap one another so you can have a continuous mastic sealant all the way across. And you also have very minimal area behind the Z closure that you need to actually caulk or use silicone on. So overall, it's just a, a good application to make sure everything stays watertight. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to install Z closure. Uh, this is just one of our, uh, we're just showing you one of the many ways and methods to install it. Now that we have all of our Z closure installed, we're gonna be taking our 7 8 mastic and running a continuous bead of mastic all the way across the top of your Z closure. And then we're gonna be ready to actually set the, uh, the pitch break high to low transition trim on. Uh, one last step before we actually install our pitch brake, we're going to go through and caulk the back side of the highs and fill all the, uh, the voids on the back side with, uh, this is just a silicone sealant. Now that we've got all of our silicone applied to the back side of the highs, we have our mastic tape on, we're ready to install the pitch break material. Now that we have this set in place, we're gonna be running uh, pan head screws, roughly every 12 inches on center, all the way across the very top of our pitch break material. I would recommend pinning one end and then going down to your other end, making sure that you're still on your marks and pinning that side as well and then work your way across with fasteners. Now that that's complete, we're gonna go back through on this front side and we're gonna be pop riveting through the front face of the Z closure, roughly every 12 inches on center as well. Uh, now that we have the pop rivets installed, uh, all of our pan head screws up above are installed. The next step is gonna be marking out for the front and the back side of our joggle cleat. That way we know where the front of the joggle cleat's gonna be running and we also know where the mastic's going. We recommend installing the joggle cleat down to where the front face is roughly six inches down from the top of your pitch brake trim. 
And then our particular piece of joggle cleat is measuring three and a half inches wide. So then we're also going to be making a mark at two and a half inches. We're going to do that on both sides. And we're going to draw two straight lines with our straight edge. Uh, obviously, larger applications, you're going to want to be using uh, a chalk line or have somebody go through and actually scribe it all out. Now that we have both of our lines marked out, this is going to be the top edge of our mastic uh, since we're going to be fastening about a half inch below it. So now we're going to run our mastic all the way across and install our joggle cleat. And before you apply too much pressure to it, I'm going to end up pinning this side with a pan head screw. I'm going to do the same thing on that other end, and then we're going to run pan head screws all the way across this roughly 12 inches on center. Now that we've got our joggle cleat completely installed, uh, you're going to be measuring for your panel length uh, to figure out what your panels are going to be cut to. In this particular instance, we're measuring 39 inches. Uh, you still have to factor in your one inch fold. So we would, we would cut these panels at 40 inches, do your one inch fold, and hook your joggle cleat all the way across to your roof. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.